Multicolor 3D printing can produce some truly outstanding results. So today we learn how to create multi-part logos and graphics for 3D printing in CAD. This video is part of a series on creating custom 3D designs for 3D printing using a free Onshape account. A link to the entire playlist can be down below in the description. This video was a request from my patron Corey, who wanted a guide on creating multicolor graphics using a Bamboo Lab AMS system. But of course, everything here will apply to any printer with multi-extrusion capabilities. Let's start simple and then work our way up. The first thing to realize when we're doing multi-extrusion is that we don't need to leave a clearance gap like we would if we were printing these objects separately. We can see in this sketch that I've specified that at 0.15, anywhere between 0.1 to 0.2 will be spot on depending on your printer. But for dual or multi-extrusion, we don't need a gap in between. We have a separate extrusion for each object and we need to make sure we're on new instead of add each time we create them. This here is just a simple example, but you can see that the zero gap in between the two parts, and that's what we'll be aiming for throughout this video. So let's move on to an actual logo, and I'm gonna do the logo for my second channel, TT Racing. And we're gonna start with the best case scenario in that I have the source vector files that make up the logo. It's worth taking the time to clean up any overlapping segments so you have simple, clean outlines. And then after that, I would recommend exporting as a DWG or DXF. Back in Onshape, I'm going to start a sketch, put it on the top plane, and then come up to the toolbar and select Insert DXF or DWG. I've already imported mine here, but if you haven't, you can click on Import and select your file. It will then appear on this list and we can select it to insert it into the sketch. As we can see, coming from the source vector means all of our lines are quite clean. So I'm simply going to draw a circle that's going to put a boundary around everything, and I'm going to dimension that border because everything at the moment is an arbitrary size, but the first dimension you place in a sketch will scale everything down to match. So by setting that as 80 millimeters, the logo has been scaled down as well. Since this model is gonna be cosmetic, I'm not gonna worry about constraining any of this. I know the overall size and I'm happy with how it looks. So I'm gonna close my sketch and then come to extrude and start my individual extrusions. I've got my outer section. I'm gonna turn back on my sketch, come to extrude again, select my inner letters, remembering that we want a new body, not adding to the old one. And then finally, back one more time to do the R. At this point, we're pretty much ready to go, but there's a couple of things we'll do to help us organize. The first of those is to rename our parts to give them a more descriptive name, which will help later. There's no right or wrong here. It's simply a matter of naming something that makes sense to you. The second thing we'll do is to now right click on each part and come up to edit appearance. This is completely optional, but I like to visualize exactly how this is going to be by setting the colors ahead of time. The last step, optional once again, is to come to the view settings and set it to shaded without edges. Now we can see there's no longer any black outlines and that gives us a truer representation of how the printed model will look. Everything's done and it's time to export and there's two different methods we can do. Firstly, we can come to each part individually, come up to export and then download as normal in SDL format. And of course, you'll need to do this for each part and this can get pretty tedious if you've got many parts that make up your model. You'll need to drag them into the slicer all at the same time, and most slicers will then prompt you to load them as a single object with multiple parts. Moving one object will move the others and they'll stay locked in place. There is a more efficient way by right clicking on our Part Studio tab and coming to export there. This will export all the contents in one go, and instead of STL, we're going to choose 3MF. Once we click export, there is a short delay but it's normally only a couple of seconds. Now when we import this single file, we'll see that it's made up of three different objects, but if we hit the sort button, it will split them apart. So let's select all three, right click, and then go to assemble, and that will group them together with each of the parts in the perfect position. Before going any further, I like to load up all of my filaments ready for multicolor printing. And if you're on a Bamboo Lab printer with an AMS, I think it's a good idea to input exactly what filaments you're using on the touchscreen, as this will save time in a moment. If you're using Orca Slicer or Bamboo Studio, you can then come up and click this button, which synchronizes the filament list from the printer. Click on Resync, and your colors will magically appear ready to assign. 
Now you note I have ASA here, which I'm not going to use in this print. So I'm going to right click on the overall assembly and change my filament to one of the ones I am using. This means that the calibration pattern won't be printed from a different filament. Now, because I named my parts in Onshape, I can right click and assign the filament that I want quite easily. We can see that a purge block is automatically created. And before we do any further slicing, I think the best thing you can do is to flip your object to be face down on the bed. We can press F for face, click the top surface, and then it will be inverted. And if everything looks good in the preview, we can send our print job to the printer. All of the filament changes slow things down, but the end result can't really be argued with. The combination of a textured bed, as well as inverting the object, means that the side that we look at is very smooth, and any filament boogers that got caught in the wrong place should be out of sight and out of mind. In most cases, we just won't have access to the source vector file, so we need a workaround. Most of the time, we'll only have an image file, probably a JPEG or a PNG. If this is you, you want as high a res as possible, but you can still get good results with something small like this, which is 512 by 512. There's lots of these sites around, I've tested a few, and I found this one pretty reliable. If you can put up with some ads, then it is free to use. It could do different conversions, but the one you want, I've linked directly in the description. We're gonna scroll down until we can see the input box and then drag and drop our image file onto the screen. There are some options here, but I didn't really need to use them. So all you need to do on the upload tab is click convert to DXF. Our source image will be raster, meaning that it's pixel based. So what this website is doing is looking for the edges of these colors and trying to trace a vector path. Once it's done that, we can simply click download. And when we close the ad, a zip file will download with our DXF inside. After we click on the plus and import this to Onshape, the DXF will get its own tab that we can click on. It looks pretty good from a distance, but up close we can see it's not quite as perfect as before. And you'll find that for images with multiple colors, it might trace each color and end up with two perimeters. But as you're about to see, even a dodgy one like this isn't that much of a problem. It should also be noted that the higher resolution the image, the less chance you'll have of picking up these undesired artifacts. Once again, we'll open a sketch and click the insert DXF button. We'll select our uploaded file and now we'll do a tiny bit of cleanup. We can see that this inner perimeter is really quite messy, but it will be very tedious to go along clicking each segment one at a time to delete the whole thing. Fortunately, we have a much better option. We can right click, come to select and then create selection and then toggle the mode from tangent connected to loop chain connected. Now all we need to do is click a single line from this perimeter. Everything is highlighted yellow. We can click add selection and then press delete on the keyboard. And just like that, we have a much cleaner result. Now I'm gonna do exactly what I did last time, drawing a circle around everything and dimensioning it at 80 mils so the whole lot scales down to what I want. After following the same steps to extrude my three different colors, renaming them and assigning the appearance, we can see that on the screen, it doesn't really look quite perfect but in a way, 3D printing is an imprecise process thanks to the molten filament, which means that when we compare the original high quality source vector to one converted from a low quality image, in real life, it's pretty hard to tell the difference and we still get a great result. We can of course do more customization and editing, as I'm gonna demonstrate on this open source hardware logo by Matteo Zlata. I've once again put it through the same website and because it was a higher resolution image, the resulting trace is quite accurate. I wanna make a key ring out of this, but I don't want the lower text. So I can simply drag a box around that after I've imported it and press delete. I have my base shape, but I'd like to have a border around this with the second color and then extend it out with a hole for the key ring. I'm going to use my same selection trick as earlier. Right click, selection, create selection, change the mode, click on one line and then add to selection. With the perimeter highlighted, I'm going to come up and click the offset tool. As you can see, the entire perimeter is traced automatically for us. We can hit enter, input the exact dimension we want, and then enter again to finalize it. I've then come through and deleted the inner portion and added some simple geometry to extend the perimeter of the second color, including a hole for the key ring. Just like before, two extrudes make up the shape. We rename them, edit the appearance, and we end up with a nice preview of what we're going to print. I may or may not have got the size a little too big for a key ring, but the result still looks great. As you can see, using the textured bed gives a very clean and consistent front surface. This doesn't only work with logos. For instance, I'm searching for Bruce Lee, changing over to image results, and then clicking on tools, 
and changing the color to black and white. I'm then going to change the usage rights to weed out anything commercial. And in the first row, we have one outstanding candidate. This beautiful artwork was completed by Apuba Canty Roy. They actually have a YouTube channel showing how they create these high quality works. So please follow the link in the description and show them some love. This image has the option to download it in quite high resolution. And because of that, it's imported into Onshape absolutely superbly once converted to a DXF with the same website. The first thing I did was import this DXF in on its own sketch. I then extruded it completely in one color. I then came back in, selected some of the perimeters and did a small offset outline once more. And like with the open source hardware logo, I deleted any internal sections I didn't want and then use simple straight lines to join up the segments, which you can see here in blue. Unfortunately, Onshape really slowed down when faced with this detail to sketch, but I eventually got there. That portion was then extruded as a new object in a second color. Finally, a custom circular sketch with another two extrusions, one to cut a hole and the second one to extrude a colored border. Something this detailed ended up with 15 different parts and I didn't bother naming them, but one thing that I did do was to simply select on the surface of each of these parts that needed to be different colors and anything you click on will be highlighted in the parts list so you can right click and edit the appearance for multiple objects at once. This one is perhaps my favorite because the detail is so fantastic. However, you'll notice there was a lot of filament smudges and I probably should have made sure the nozzle was really clean before starting the print. Even so, I still think it looks pretty stunning. One more quick example where I did the sketch manually. I did import a reference image but all of the geometry that got 3D printed was just straight lines and arcs because the shape was so simple. This one's also an example of simplifying the design to suit the amount of colors you have available. For instance, here I had four, so I couldn't include the white stripes and little pin stripes that go inside them. So just keep in mind your total color capacity for whatever you're producing. Hopefully you'll agree that with this workflow, it's actually quite fast to produce some high quality results. And while everything here has been multicolor, all of these principles also work for multi-material. In this model, I have rigid and TPU sections embedded within each other. This model was then printed on an IDEX machine, half TPU, half PLA, and this technique formed the basis for some at-home self-assembling 4D printing. Check out the video linked in the description if you'd like to see more. Some great results, and all I'll add is that while you can print one-offs for yourself at home, I wouldn't release anyone else's logo or artworks without attribution and permission. Thank you to Corey for recommending this video, thank you to you for watching the whole way through, and until next time, happy designing for multicolor 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.